Hey everyone, welcome back to Ray Solar TV. Today we're talking about, well, we're talking about the sun as we usually do and solar panels. So what's happening is January 8th, 2023, the sun is getting a lot warmer. It's getting a lot higher and we are at high noon. So it's about as high as the sun's gonna get here in this region for today. But what I wanted to go with you through is the surface temperature of the solar panels and what begins to happen when these temperatures start to warm up and the snow that accumulates, not in large amounts, starts to melt off. So if we take a look at the panels right now, we can see that the snow is melting off. We can see depending on the sun angle and the angle of your roof, we can see that that frost and that light snow is slowly starting to dissipate and then it's starting to slide down here. Now, more importantly, let's take a temperature sensor, a laser sensor, and let's take a look at what the outdoor temperature is right now. So this is gonna measure the temperature outside. So it's roughly minus 11 Celsius. We'll say minus 12, so it's gonna bounce around a bit, but let's take a look at the surface temperature now of the panel and what's happening. So minus two here, and we can see how that surface really starts to warm up. There we are, minus 1.5, minus one, and that's gonna to start to warm up as that sun starts to hit the surface of the panels for a lot longer and really start to dissipate the snow off the module. So let's do a time check right now. It's approximately 12, like I said, 12.30, 12.32 here. And what we'll do is we'll check in towards the end of the day and see what this looks like. Now we're gonna get about some good sun only till about 3.30, 4 o'clock. And then that sun is really gonna start heading west and get on the other side of the house here that's in this particular arrangement. But what's really important to understand about this at this time of year is really looking at the economics for yourself. So if you own a grid tied system, so this is a net metering grid tied system, you want to look at if, is it worth clearing the snow? And the answer is, well, that's really depending on your situation. If you're clearing the snow yourself, absolutely and you're healthy and you're comfortable getting up on a ladder getting up on your roof to remove the snow then it might be worth it right because i could produce a couple uh, i'm gonna produce about two three kilowatt hours of power here over the next couple hours and why not that's going to offset some of my energy consumption so you need to make that determination yourself but importantly again is that the surface is warming up even at minus 10 degrees, the ambient temperature, so the temperature around the modules, but the surface temperature is really warming up and enabling that melting of the snow. And that's where, you know, it's going to be advantageous for you because you don't have to do those light dustings or, you know, the couple inches that we had, say, that's sitting on top there from a couple days. So let's talk about one more thing. So I'm talking about the surface angle of the panel. Let's talk about why you're gonna get optimum melting on the surface of the panels versus a different pitch angle. So I'm demonstrating what I'm doing here in the Northern Hemisphere. So for example, in the Northern Hemisphere, we, we need the solar panels to face south. If we're in the Southern Hemisphere, say like Australia, we want the panels to face north. But now we wanna talk about the angle. So for panels to work optimally, to get their maximum performance, we need the panels to be directly perpendicular to the sun rays, to the photons coming to hit the panels. Remember, the creation of electricity through a solar panel and its solar cells is a process of those photons hitting the surface of the panel, and there's an electrochemical process that starts to take place, and that's how we convert it into DC electricity. This video is not about getting into the details and maybe I'll do that in another episode. But what I'm talking about is the optimal angle. And that's gonna vary on where you are by region or where you are around the world. So in central Canada, where I am here and doing this demonstration, these panels would be optimally set at 45 degrees. And we determine that by the longitude and the latitude of where we're located. And so you can find that information on most 
data websites that are related to weather or environmental conditions. And I'll put a link down in the description specifically to NRCAM, which is the data related to solar insulation and all things related to solar production that would be relative to if you're in Canada. So I'll put that link down below, so check it out. But that website will give you exactly where you are in your region, the optimum angle for your solar panels. So if I had a mean angle, meaning I had an average angle I wanted to keep the modules at, it would be 45 degrees. So, but that's gonna vary depending on if you are, um, say in Windsor, Ontario, say one of the more southern points of Canada. If you're all the way down to say like Point Pelee or something down there, you're gonna be, your optimum angle, uh, average angle might be 35 degrees. The surface of the panels are gonna get a lot warmer if they were tilted up to 45 degrees. But this, the installation was done on a fixed roof, and in that case, we're not going to angle or change the angle because then it changes the amount of surface area that we have available to put up the panels. That's a whole other topic for another day. But I just want you to think about when your panels are getting installed and if you're putting them on, say, a ground mounted system or a fixed mounted system, you're always going to get the best optimum production if the panels are always kept perpendicular to the sun rays. And again, that's gonna vary on where you are. Here, optimally would be 45 degrees. And if I wanted to optimize that further, say during the summer months, then I would be tilting those solar panels back because the sun would be much higher. All right, so let's check back in at the end of the day and let's see how much of the surface gets melted off. As I'm talking, you know, we see some shifting of that snow that was there and uh, we'll see what's left. Right, so we're back. The magic of video. We were talking about this earlier at about 12.30 in the afternoon. It's now about 4.15. You can see behind me the sun is going down and we can see our array here that I would say that on these 16 panels it's safe to say that we've cleared over 95% of the panels pretty much right down to the surface. So that's amazing. The temperature did rise to about minus eight today and the surface temperature did get to about zero degrees with that sun. So now we're back to, let's see here. We use our scanner. We could see we're about minus 14. That's about the outside. So that was just an example of what can happen as the ambient temperatures start to warm up and the surface temperatures get a lot hotter on solar panels. The snow is gonna actually shed itself, but if you get more than an inch of snow beyond that, that light is not gonna penetrate through and the surface is not gonna warm up. So even if you clean the solar panels where they're not perfect, but as long as that surface can absorb some of that heat, and get some of those photons, you're gonna to start to uh, clear the panels and create some production. So we'll take a look at the production that we did with our energy monitor. All right, so here we're looking at the production for the day and we can see that peak of about 2.5 kilowatt hours. And we can see here as I expand where that production that I was talking about that last, you know, about two and a half, three kilowatt hours came from. And that was from the time that I started recording at about 1230 until the end of the production day. So we can see that uh, by not even having to touch the panels, they cleared themselves and off we went. And the next thing is, um, if you found some value, if you found some value out of this video or you just found it entertaining, please consider subscribing, hit the thumbs up, comment below, and we're gonna continue bringing you content, whether you're a DIYer or you're a professional installer looking to get started in the industry. All of the information that we're sharing at Ray Solar here is about making renewable energy easy. All right, we will see you on the next one and have yourself a great week.